Chris here again this week. We got another guitar review. This time we have the Friedman Classic T. So Telecasters have always evaded me. Uh, there's a mix of the no contour thing and the very specific pickup combination that it's not usually my go-to, but they do tend to sound pretty good. And uh, every time I hear one on a demo, I go, man, I really wish I had a Tele. Uh, it's just haven't really gotten around to getting one. Uh, I've tried a couple Fenders, didn't love them. Saw this go up on Reverb for a pretty good price and I figured, you know what, let's give it a shot because I have not had just a regular standard two pickup Telecaster for quite a while. And the thing about this one that I thought was special is it uses sugar pine for the body. So it is light, um, pretty cool. So let's go through the details on this. Uh, we've looked at a couple different Friedmans on this channel before, so you're probably semi familiar with them, but Let's see what this one has. So up top we got the regular Friedman headstock. The only difference here I noticed is this logo is now silver. I think, I don't know if it's the telly or they decided silver matches better with the white body but cool little detail there and we have six Klusen just regular tuners these are not locking and the headstock has that kind of sticky nitro finish on it and thankfully uh, as most Friedman's they just reliced it right off the back so this neck has such a nice kind of natural feel to it it is barely finished uh, it's not like raw feeling but it just feels old and smooth and played. It's it's a really cool finish they do on their neck. Some of them are less consistent than others. My Vintage S, for example, felt a little more like raw. My Cali uh, was smoother than this. And this one's kind of right in the middle. So I, I, like, I like the feel of this neck. It's decently big. It is uh, something like 0.9 something inches at the first fret. So it's on the chunky side, in my opinion, uh, like a Gibson 59, for example, is like an inch or something. So it's more on that side than like a shreddy guy. So this is fairly round. It's kind of a uniform C, except at the very first fret, it feels like it might be just a little bit of a soft V, but for the most part, super comfortable neck. I really like the necks on basically every Friedman. This one's no exception. And I would say it feels very similar to the carve and shape of all the other Friedmans I've had. <laughs> The radius on this one's a little different though. This is seven to 10 compound, so a little more traditional. Uh, usually Friedman's are 10 to 14, so this one is a little rounder, but to be honest, it's not something that really jumped out at me. I don't think I would notice if I didn't read it in the, the specs. So that may affect some more than others, but for me, I find that the difference between, you know, seven to 10 or 10 to 14 is pretty minor for the most part. And then we have those inlays that we're used to seeing on Friedman's. Uh, these, I believe, are a little different. I feel like they used to have silver in the middle. These look like cream in the middle, but it's like a little black circle and a dot. And they're super clean looking. They pop well on the board, and I think it's just enough different that it looks interesting. So I love the neck. <laughs> So 
So we have nickel frets on these, uh, which is traditional. This is called the Classic T. I didn't expect a super jumbo stainless steel. And the fret works really nice. It's just smoothed off and it feels good. Um, it, and the frets are, I would say, medium. They're, they're not huge and they just feel good. Um, I, I've really had good luck with the way the Freedmans feel. Uh, they're plecked, the necks are straight. They just, they play great and the neck always feels good in your hand. So there's something about Friedman guitars where they've, they've really figured out how to get the neck very comfortable and at home feeling. So nice, nice work on that. And of course, this is just a maple uh, board and neck. And that's it, that's all there is to it. The only other cool feature is you got the truss rod down here on a spoke, which is always appreciated because definitely makes it easier to adjust if you need to. And that's about it. The neck joint is pretty traditional. So you're going to hit it at, I mean, honestly, like 16 is where I hit it. And it's, it's square. So this is a classic T. I don't think most people buying this are going to expect something super modern, but just be aware this is a very traditional neck joint and you, you do run into it far before you get to the 21st second fret. So that, that'd be a stretch because uh, I don't know if you can see my hand is way down there. So it's, it's, it's a little cramped, but that's all right. <laughs> connects with their pin system, which helps, I guess, both the neck from shifting and also maybe with the resonance a little bit, but cool system. Uh, we've gone over that in the other videos, so you can check that out if you want more details. And overall, haven't had any tuning problems. I haven't had any dead spots. I haven't had any, uh, you know, bends choking out or anything. Everything just plays as it should. So perfect, perfect neck. I love it. And like I said, it's very similar to my other Friedman guitars, like it, almost exactly the same. Okay, and then we got the sugar pine body. Uh, pine is not a very common guitar wood. You don't see it too often. I believe a long time ago, like Fender was using it and that was because it was cheap, probably easy to work on. So it's also very soft, which could be a problem. Uh, obviously guitars get played. Sometimes they get a ding in them you probably don't want to build a guitar out of wood that's just mush. And I believe the compromise here is sugar pine is harder than regular pine. So it's not just like Home Depot pine, <laughs> I don't think. And I'm sure it's been dried out and aged however they need to do it to make it work for this guitar. And keep in mind, tellies don't have any comfort cuts and they're typically pretty heavy. And this one, no belly cut, no carve here, no contour. So I would expect a guitar like this to be eight pounds probably. And that's about where the other tellies I've had come in at. This is six and a half pounds, six and a half for a telly. That is super light. Uh, six and a half pounds is the lightest guitar I own at the moment. And the only two I think I've had under that are the Parker, which is like five and a half and the Strandberg, which is like, 4.75 so this thing is super light and it, and it really feels great so between the super light body the super thin nitro finish and the pine it it just resonates, it feels great, and it sounds really good. So I know other brands, uh, Novo uses sugar pine, I believe, or some kind of pine, and I've seen the option come up a little more, but I totally get what they're doing here because, man, this thing rings and rings, and it sounds really, really cool. The other thing is, yeah, it might be a little softer, but it's relic, so if it gets another ding, I guess it doesn't really matter, right? And we got a trans white finish with this nitro. There is checking on the nitro. That's something that's really hard I found to get on camera, especially at this distance, but I'll try to get some in the close-ups. So it's checked all the way through. And then because it's transparent, you can see this kind of pine grain running through there. And it's just a cool looking guitar. I, I, this is the exact color 
of a telly that I wanted. I love the kind of trans white black guard maple neck. And so when I saw this, I was like, oh man, finally, this is like the exact one I was looking for. And super happy with it so far. <laughs> have a traditional this is a gota uh, i don't even know what this is called the like ashtray telly bridge and it's got the brass traditional saddles um, which seem to intonate fine so i don't think there's any problem with it they are compensated i've noticed the it's staggered a little bit and it's really comfortable on your hand it's a nice bridge i actually <laughs> was surprised because i Really hadn't spent a lot of time with this kind of bridge and thought oh man it's going to be vintagey and uncomfortable and kind of a pain to work with but zero issues it's rock solid doesn't move and it feels good so nice nice bridge and then we have two these are just listed as friedman classic t pickups so i don't know if they're different than uh for example if you order vintage t with single coils if this is what you get or if these are different, but they are insane. Uh, I love these pickups and that is a running theme with every Friedman I've reviewed basically every single time. The standout feature, I mean, obviously they're great guitars, but the standout feature on every single one of them is those pickups just sound like something you've never heard. And this one's no different. And of course that's a mix of a lot of variables, right? I mean. I guarantee if you take these pickups and put them in a Squire, it's not going to sound the same. So when I say these pickups sound phenomenal, yeah, I do mean the sum of all the parts we're hearing here. But there's something special about these. Uh, they really, really sound good. they got a little twang to them. They have this chimey kind of clear, I, you know, it's always hard to describe. You'll have to just listen to the clips, but really cool. And I love the kind of Morgan almost broken up a little dirt that kind of thing with these pickups is one of my new favorite tones i can't stop playing it it sounds so cool and uh, super super neat and the only thing i will mention though is the specs for this guitar say it has a three-way switch so you know it's going to be probably bridge middle neck this came to me with four so my guess is the previous owner added, uh, I forget, one of them is like an out of phase thing or something, but the two middle positions on this are some of my favorite tones. So I, I really love those. Uh, they're single coils, you do get some noise, but uh, I, I just really can't get over the way this thing sounds. So very, very excited to demo that for you. have volume tone four-way switch should come with a three-way switch uh, the only knock here is I'm surprised they didn't put one of those slanted things here because as I've mentioned on other tele reviews this there's like hardly any room there it's pretty hard to get that out of there quickly if, if you're in the bridge position you kind of have to hook it uh, otherwise I mean it, it's not super comfortable so 
I know you can buy a plate with a kind of diagonal pickup switch on there. And I'm surprised they just didn't do that by default. Maybe it's like a patented thing or something, but it would have been nice to include because I don't see a downside. It's certainly not gonna change the tone or anything like that. And we have just a plain black pick guard, nothing on it, single ply, looks normal. And like I mentioned, the entire thing is relic. So you have the checking, you have some dings and dents. Some of the hardware is just lightly tarnished. This is probably what's considered a, a light relic for Friedman. Obviously you can order them as messed up as you want. Some of them, most of the paint's gone. <laughs> this one, I would call this very, very light. One of the, the lighter relics I've had on the channel. But overall, it looks great, and it's just relic enough where I'm not super worried about it getting a ding or something like that. So I, I really like it. Of course, you get string through body down here, and regular Friedman neck plate, and that's really it. These are very simple guitars. Uh, that's kind of the beauty of the Tele is no frill. Uh, they sound great. Like I mentioned, no comfort cuts. That is not my personal favorite, but I can't knock it because I knew what I was getting into when I bought this. Uh, Tellys don't have comfort cuts and this one's no exception. I do wish it had just a couple little minor things that would smooth it out a little bit because it, it does rub my arm after playing for about 20 minutes. I start getting annoyed by that edge, but that's, that's part of the deal. But like I said, the rest of the guitar, the neck, the bridge, everything else is a very comfortable experience. So been been very happy with that. Lastly, the price, these retail at $26.99. That is very expensive. Uh, right now, there's one on Reverb for like $1,900. That's about what I paid. Uh, if you get one used, they seem to be around there, which I think is a very fair deal. It does compete with, for example, a Sur Antique is going to be around that price used, and those are also great too. So it's just going to depend on kind of what tones you're looking for and what kind of features you like. But... Again, another very positive Friedman review. Uh, I have yet to play a bad one, and they're all similar in a way, but they all have just enough personality where I, I think any of them are worth owning. I think the Cali has, it, they all kind of have their own voice, so the Cali, the Vintage S, this, I mean, it, it's all over the place, and they all just sound so good. It's really hard to argue with them, so... Uh, I, th I guess pine is totally worth checking out. I didn't know if it might affect the tone adversely or do something that I didn't expect, but really it's just light and resonant. And between that and the pickups, home run again. So I guess that's it this week. Uh, definitely check one of these out if you're looking for a telly. Um, a little, little pricey, but well worth it, I think. So I guess that's it, and hopefully you found that useful. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you next time.